Boop, 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 boop. What's up, people? We are back with more Dangan Rumpa. Wait, Monokuma Rock. That's where we gotta go. The first class trial is about to begin. And I have no idea what to expect. Huh? Are you kidding me? Hey! What the heck is that mountain? When did that get here? Never mind that. How did they even make a mountain shaped like Monokuma? It's like the no statues way. of the presidents in America. I forgot the fucking name of it. That story. That story might be true after all. There might be an enormous organization involved in all of this. You mean, what Byakuya said before? You right? are right. Byakuya. We still needed his knowledge. <laughs> I still can't believe he's dead. She's going crazy. What happened to Gundam and Fuyuhiko? Um. Now that you mention it, it, it appears they aren't here yet. I got it! Oh, I know. They probably ran away. No way! Ah, hell nah! There's no way I'd let them escape, you know? Look! I dragged this one back over here! Don't fuck with me! I'm telling you! Let me go! Hey! Come on now! If you keep acting violent, I might just eat you up! Hey! Hey, Fuyuhiko! What were you doing all this time? Huh? Nothing! I wasn't really doing anything. I was just chilling in my room when I suddenly heard that fat bastard got killed. Who the fuck cares about that anyway? You. How can you say something so irresponsible? Do you understand? We've been doing our best to investigate this murder. Even though we don't want to. Just to survive. Wait. My hero. That's enough. You too, Fuyuhiko. Dumbass. Um... And I guess we're waiting for Gunda. What happened, sinner? I am right here. Now then, let us begin! Remember this well. A main character arrives when he intends to. Hmm... Huh? Hey, is he having like his own game or own anime series shot where he is the main character from his perspective? It seems you notice it too. <laughs> he got his earring back. If he did, then I'm right. Well now. All right. Now that everyone's all together, let's take the secret entrance to the trial field. Wait. B please wait a second. What's this? My mind, Monami. Just what are you doing here? Nobody asked for you! I... I... Wah -wah? Hmm? Do you actually want to join in? You masochistic mascot! Do you want to taste how powerless you are at the class trial? You're an even bigger masochist than I thought! Special bleeding service! Oh well! I'm a big brother who dotes on his little sister! I shall allow your special participation! Is she going to participate in the class trial? Really? That would be funny. See ya later! I'll go on ahead and wait for you guys! So hurry over! Huh? He told us to come, but... How do we get there? I... Don't see any doors or vehicles. What's going on? He mentioned something about a secret entrance. Was it? Secret entrance? Uh, Monaco, Morocco, though. I probably should have talked to people actually. Oh my god, that is terrifying. What? What the? Something shaky. <laughs> this is dangerous. Everyone, please get down. Holy shit! <laughs> My hero was almost crushed. It was like his tongue, you know, just... It was like a... What are those animals with long tongues? I guess like a frog or something, you know, where it just like... Sp -sp -sp 
spits out its tongue to grab a fly on the other side of the room. S something came out. No way. Could it be? Is he telling us to enter it? What? S such a suspicious aura. Even Crimson Steel Elephant's magazine is trembling with fear. Oh, that's so totally suspicious. Hey, 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 hey! Forgive me. Seriously, just forgive me already. Ah. Uh, <laughs> why is he asking for forgiveness? Hey, why don't we just stop here? I mean, none of this is real anyway. Like, not even remotely. No way, no way, no way! There's no way we'll find the killer. So you're just gonna give up? We're all gonna die? Stupid! Complaining won't get us anywhere. If you're really a man, then man up for God's sake. We've come this far. We have no choice but to keep moving forward. You're right. There's nowhere for us to run. We need to do it. Hmm. If that's everyone's decision, I'll just follow you guys. Yep. If this were a video game, it'd have a very high difficulty level. Let's do our best to clear the game. Alright, Shaki. Shaking with fear and nervousness, I hesitantly lifted my feet and stepped onto the escalator. I won't think anymore. If I think, I'll run away. All I could do was stare upward, intensely, as the escalator carried me. And each of us entered Monokuma Rock. This is an elevator! I see! This entire rock is an elevator! <sighs> Once again, Monokuma is doing what he pleases. However... If we're, if he's gone this far, it means something like this. I don't think he's playing around. That's true, like, look how deep we are going on the ground. Like, obviously, if I keep this going forever, it seems like we'll just travel to the other side of the world, which is kind of impossible considering the center of the Earth is like molten lava, if not even hotter but you know it's like obviously fucking hot that's what I'm saying so we can't actually unless we go around it that could be possible but how would he have the resources to dig that deep through the ground anyway what I'm trying to say is like how the fuck did he make this something like this on an island uh, even so we're going pretty deep you're right I heard an unnerving chattering sound inside my head I soon realized it was the sound of my teeth. All I could do was purse my lips tightly so everyone else couldn't hear it. There we were, listening to unpleasant roars as the elevator plunged deeper and deeper into the earth. Some time passed before the elevator finally finished descending. And then, the elevator door slowly opened. Welcome! God, this is not... Ugh. Bad memories. Horrible memories. Ta-da! This is the class trial field. How do you like it? It's a special place that will decide your fates! Why, you? What the hell is he thinking? Locking us in a shitty looking place like this? Don't fuck with me! Are you fucking crazy? Don't mess with me, asshole! <laughs> Complain all you like! I'm used to it by now! <laughs> Come on! You're wasting your time and energy! Hurry up and take your seats where your names are written! It looks like everyone knows. Even if we try to resist, it won't change a thing. Just as Monokuma ordered, we walked towards the seats we had been assigned. From this point on, we needed to find out who killed Byakuya. The ultimate affluent progeny, Fat Byakuya Togami. He was overly critical, arrogant, and condescending 
but not as bad as Danganronpa 1, I felt. But he also had a strong sense of responsibility. And as we were panicking, he accepted his role as leader and tried his very best to keep us together. A guy like him got murdered. The person who did it is one of us? I can't believe it. There's no way I can believe it. But if it's really true, we need to find out by any means possible. Because that's our only option. There's no way for us to survive unless we sacrifice the killer. And so. This life-threatening trial, billowing with hope and despair, has begun. Alright, let's quickly go over the truth bullets. So, the victim was discovered, uh, the body was discovered in the dining hall in the old end. The estimated time of this was 11.30, which was similar to all the time settings on the AC, remember? So that's probably gonna have something to do with each other. Uh, the victim was repeatedly stabbed over 10 times between the throat and the abdomen region, resulting in death. Aside from that, the body has no external injuries and no chemicals, blah blah blah, yeah. The body under the table is face down, as if Byakuya were reaching for something. The knife, bloodstained knife found under the table where the body was discovered. A glowing paint-like substance coats it. But look at how the knife is on, or the blood is on the knife. If you were to stab it, it would actually feel like, you know, it doesn't look like, you know, it feels like the blood is splattered on top of the knife rather than this knife actually went through someone because then everything would be covered in blood. But now like from the top half it seems like only half of it is covered, you know, and it's from a specific angle as well. So this is not the murder weapon actually, I'm pretty certain of it. Because if you stab it through something, everything that goes, the whole part of the knife that goes inside the body should be covered in blood, but that's not the case here. And he got stabbed, like, you know, he got stabbed. It wasn't sliced, it was stabbed. So, this is not the murder weapon. This is the weapon that Byaki was reaching for when he found out that, I don't know what he saw, but he definitely saw something with the night vision goggles. He, and then he tried to grab this knife, but somebody knew about his plan or something and was probably under the floorboard, that's my guess, estimate, and then stabbed him from below. below. That seems like the best thing I can come up with at the moment. Uh, Blessing on the table, a pool of blood formed around the body underneath the table. A lot of blood was splattered against the inside. Yeah, yeah, there was no sign that the body was dragged through the blood stain. Uh, gaps in the floor, the floor, this is very important. Gundam dropped one of his earrings through these gaps. That's an important thing. The AC timer, well, everything is kind of important, right? Uh, the AC timer in the dining hall is set to 11.30. AC timer in the office was also set to 11.30. So that seems like, I think it was, I think this must have been all caused to, to, to uh, what did Sonya say for the like the the circuit breaker overload, right? Because remember, all the oven was it ovens? No, it was irons. All the irons was, were set on. If 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 you imagine that all that is set on at the same time, then it's just like this sudden spike in electricity, right? Which could cause an overload, and that's what probably caused the blackout in the first place. So somebody definitely planned this ahead of time at 11:30. Everything is gonna go on and then pew 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 and then blackout and the plan goes into uh, into play basically. Alright, uh, night vision goggles found on the table. Blah, blah. Apparently it came from the supermarket. This has gotta be from the Biakuya's Dura Lumen case because he had like a specific case in which the night vision goggles came from as well. So definitely Biakuya used this to go to the other side of the table because in the picture he was on one side of the, on the room and you know when uh, that was before the blackout and then after the blackout he was suddenly under the under the table dead so he must have moved and deliberate movement as well and you can't do that without the um, without the night vision goggles uh, during the blackout Mikan tripped and fell into the dining hall by the time the lights, the lights came on she ended up in a compromising pose Kind of weird that this is a truth bullet to me, uh, in all honesty, that it's the embarrassing post, but it's gotta be something to do that perhaps that she tripped or something like that, so yeah. Uh, the Dura Lumen case, Byakuya had with him, there's a lot of security equipment inside and hard plastic case as well, the key to the other Dura Lumen case was inside here too, so the other one, the other Dura Lumen case, 
with all the, the, the stuff that Yakuya confiscated was basically not used. That wasn't part of the murder at all. But this one is, and this was the one that Byakuya said like, you know, he's going to personally guard himself because he had all these items in it in case of emergency, basically in case this happens. But that person that planned all this was one step ahead of Byakuya. Uh, during the blackout, Ibuki was able to discern all the noise that the people were making. So Mahiro spoke first, say it's a blackout, then Kazuichi, I can't see anything. Ibuki is pitch blah, 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 Mahiro, yeah, okay, Hiyoko. So this is, I, I can't really tell right now how, uh, or like, uh, you know, what is kind of the, the things that pop out, but I'm pretty sure that the order of people talking at some point during the class trial is going to be brought up and this is going to be very important to sort of figure out once we have a specific uh, suspect in mind, I guess. Uh, Irons in the storage room, there are three places in the storage room when, when Nagito found them, they were altered on definitely for the overloads. Uh, storage room tablecloth, this had something to do with the murder, so apparently the tablecloth has been swapped as well, unless it, it was someone from underneath? Could be that as well. Hmm. The gas stove in the kitchen is powered by electricity, that's why Terra Terra couldn't use it during the blackout. Alright, so there's a lot of people's accounts, which we heard from, because we kinda gotta, you know, that's the clues that we gotta go off of because of the blackout. We couldn't visually see anything ourselves, nor could other people. So it's just like, oh yeah, this happened to me during the blackout, because that's the only thing we could sort of go off of. Party dishes put his heart and soul into cooking various party dishes. However, Akane and Peiko were the only ones who ate them. And, but Akane... So that's the thing, right? Peiko apparently had... It seemed like she had food poisoning, because she sort of rushed through the bathroom. So she was the one that ate food. Akane as well. The thing then becomes, right, the, the bathroom was locked for such a long time. Was Akane the one that was locked in the bathroom? That locked herself in the bathroom because she had similar food poisoning symptoms that she had to go to the bathroom? Possibly, we don't know. A uh, fire door for fire breaks out the fire door in the hallway of the old building can be shut to keep the fire from spreading. That might be used as a possible secret entrance or something. Uh, blah, 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 the kitchen equipment list. The knife found at the crime scene was not included on the kitchen equipment list. All the dangerous items or equipment that could be a potential weapon was just confiscated. Apparently there's an iron plate for barbecue and a portable stove. Okay, that's all the items here. Yeah. Uh, when Chaku was standing guard outside, Fuyuko apparently came to the building and walked away. Uh, threatening letter was found, somebody basically saying, which caused Byakuya to be this careful and plan the party in the first place. The author is unknown. During the search of Byakuya, after Black Hat, Kazuichi headed straight to the office. He didn't see anyone there, including Peiko. Uh, Mikan's autopsy result, according to Mikan's autopsy, blah, 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 puncture wounds to his chest and abdomen. The wounds were inflicted by a thin, sharp weapon, roughly 5mm in diameter. Could it be? That's what I'm wondering. Could it have possibly been that missing skewer? I don't know, but it could be. Alright, Nikomaru kept trying to use the bathroom since before the party started, but someone was using it the whole time and was able to enter the bathroom after Miyaku's body was discovered. And that's pretty much it. So, uh, the current suspect that I feel is... I I'm not gonna sp name him in a specific order, but I have a couple of names in mind that could possibly be it. Now first, it it's Kazuichi. Kazuichi just, you know, he was very suspicious. Not suspicious, but he was very outspoken about wanting to get off the island. Like, why the fuck am I a part of this? Blah blah blah. So he definitely already has sort of some sort of motive to try and kill already, right? He really desperately wants to get off this, I this island, more so than anyone else. And he was also the one that actually just said out loud that he was moving, that he was like going around and going to the, uh, the whatchamacallit, to the office. Now that couldn't necessarily mean that he's the killer of course, but it just sort of spoke out to me. And then the second person is Gundam I feel, just because of the fact that his earring, like how does an earring fall out anyway? underneath the floorboard. I feel like you gotta actually, you know, it doesn't happen just while you're randomly walking around unless you didn't put the earring well good into your ear. So, I don't know. I feel like that has got to be something. But I definitely think that the murder ha murderer was hidden underneath the floorboards and then stabbed him from below. I definitely think that's ha that happened. So, you know, the fact that this earring was underneath there seems to possibly point out that Gundam could have been underneath there. Like, don't get me wrong, it could have definitely fallen, but it also seems 
just as likely, if not more likely, that it actually just, you know, fell off while he was underneath the floorboards. But we couldn't find a way underneath it, so it might have something to do with the fire room or fire escape path thingy, fire door, but we'll explore that later. And then the other one was possibly Nagito, I don't think it's gonna be him, but I just feel like he had the, the means of doing so, you know, he had, he had access to this entire cottage before everyone else, so he could have possibly planted that knife, although it really does seem to be Yakuya who did it though, but he could have possibly done that, and he was also very dismissive about anything that we mentioned, with like the, 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 the tablecloth filled with blood, he was like, ah, oh, no, 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 that, that's probably not, that's probably nothing, like, dude, that is a huge clue, and he just kind of brushed it off, like, it was nothing. That really spoke to me, so that kind of makes him suspicious, although I really doubt that he's the killer. But he must have some reason for like brushing that off, because why else would you say that? You know, there's gotta be a reason behind it. But hey, uh, let's start the class trial, enough babbling. Let's go. Now then, let's begin with a simple explanation of the class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and that person will earn the right to leave this island. S such a cruel rule. Poor Monomi. Before we begin, I'd like to confirm one thing. Is there really a killer among us? Most definitely! There's no doubt that the Blackened is lurking among you! Such a sad state of affairs, isn't it? By the way, this class trial is gonna be 100% fair! So there's no need to worry! Yeah, just like the fifth class trial in Danganronpa 1, right, beyond Monokuma? I'm the type who hates favoritism and prejudice. Well, not as much as I hate Monami, of course. You hate me that much? Now, let's begin. Y you're telling us to begin, but what are we supposed to do? No complaining, let's just settle this with our fists. Were you even listening to the rules? Didn't that Byakuya bastard get killed in the dining hall, huh? Then everyone there is a fucking suspect. Oh, so everyone except you now, huh? Yeah, yeah, what you're really trying to say is that you're not the killer, right? That's probably right, but... eh. No shit. You guys went off on your own and started killing each other. This has nothing to do with me. Huh? What does that mean? Anyway... Why don't we try talking about the most pressing issue on our minds? Somebody has got to lead the class trial. And this is our very first class trial with all together. I felt like it was the person that always led the class trial was Makoto, definitely in Danganronpa 1. But in a lot, a lot of those times, um, Kyoko was the one that, that, you know, helped move the conversation along as well. It was always... Makoto, Byakuya, and Kyoko, like those were like the po three power players whenever it came to the class trial, trying to figure out what exactly happened, you know? So here, with all these new characters, kind of like we gotta figure out who are going to be those dominating presence in that sense, that is going to lead the conversation. Huh. The most pressing issue on our minds? Where we found the body. It's very strange to find a body underneath the table. Then, let's start with that mystery. The reason why Byakuya's body was discovered under the dining hall table. This is so weird to me, right? Like visually, the like his looks, Hajime looks very similar to Makoto. But then again, like from the way he dresses and all that, um, Nagito looks more like uh, Makoto. So if you were to mix those two people together, you would probably get Makoto, I feel. Just only by looks, you know? Although Nagito acts a lot, very similar in most aspects to Makoto as well. Uh, the reason why Byakuya's body was discovered under the dining hall table. We can start with that. But ultimately, we need to find out who murdered him. If we can't do that... No. Thinking about if is a waste of time. 
We have to do this, no matter what. Make your argument. Knife, gaps and fluid, wood, stain on the table. Why was Byakuya's body in a place like that? His body was underneath the table at the very back of the dining hall. After the killer murdered Byakuya, they probably moved the body there. Huh? Why? Obviously, by hiding no, that the body. Make sense. They tried to delay its discovery! Like a dog burying a bone! The murder happened under the table because of the bloodstains. So they definitely didn't move the body. He died at that position, that's for sure. And nobody is capable except Nekomaru of moving Byakuya's body anyway. Huh? What he just said was strange. It clearly contradicts the information I know. Why was Byakuya's in a place like his body was under at the very back of after the killer? They probably moved the body there. Bam. No, that's wrong. I'm so used to Makoto's voice when saying that. No, I don't think the killer moved the body. Huh? Why? Try to remember what the body looked like when we found it under the table. Though there was a lot of blood everywhere. There was no sign the killer actually dragged the body through it. Yeah, I know drag marks, definitely. So that's why you think it's impossible that the killer moved the body. I see. I get your point. Oh, and here I thought I had a genius idea. Aw, oh, don't tell me Kazuichi is going to be the, the hero of this. The Yasu hero of this uh, Danganronpa. Oh god. Too bad you're so stupid and boring and unpopular. Your life is meaningless. Wow. Does it always have to be so personal, Hyoko? I respond better to praise, you know. But if the killer didn't move the body, why was it under the table? Yakuya was probably killed under the table. Of course. What? You think he was killed under the table? So Byakuya snuck under the table for reasons unknown. And that's when he was killed. Then, shortly thereafter, we found his body under the table. Th that does make sense, but why did he go under the table? Obviously he was hiding so he could surprise us. That dude was always a big jokester. Okay, you're completely misremembering Byakuya Akane. The hell he was? You seriously couldn't tell what kind of person he was? Hmm. Maybe he panicked during the blackout and dove under the table. But he couldn't see. It's a blackout, not an earthquake. Just because the power went out doesn't mean he'd dive under the table. The reason why is probably connected to what Byakuya was doing during the party, don't you think? The reasons Byakuya dove under the table, if it's connected to what Byakuya was doing during, it's gotta be the knife. He was definitely there to grab the knife. There's no doubt about it. I mean, he even illuminated it, right? He put the, the the glowing light on it to make it easier for him to locate when he was under the table. So it's gotta be the knife. I can prove it with this. It probably has something to do with the knife we found under the table. Knife? Oh, you mean that thing that obviously screams, I am the murder weapon! Byakuya probably noticed the knife was hidden there. So in order to get it, he moved under the table. Man, Hajime's voice is something to get used to. He was particularly sensitive to the presence of dangerous items, so I cannot deny that possibility. But how did he notice that there was a knife under the table? If he knew beforehand, he probably would have done something about it before the blackout, right? Then, instead of knowing about it beforehand, maybe he saw it right at that moment. Like, for example, he might have seen someone trying to take the knife out from under the table. Yeah, but it was a blackout, you know? No, that's not possible. What? You seem rather confident about that. Of course. I have proof to back me up. 
<laughs> this is almost like a real trial! Isn't that the point, Monokuma? So many? I'm sure Byakuya ducked under the table during the blackout. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't see. That sounds correct. If that's the case... It's about during the blackout. During so the blackout, Mr. Ham Hands must have seen the killer take the knife. But it was super pitch black. It was so dark I couldn't see my food. Byakuya couldn't see in the dark either. That's definitely this one. No, that's wrong! No, Byakuya was probably the only one who was able to see in the dark. Why do you say that? If he was using those night vision goggles we found under the table, he could have seen what was happening. So... Are you saying Byakuya was the one who used those night vision goggles? It came from his Duralumin case, for sure. Yeah, that seems to be the case. Your reasoning is out of focus! What? No, that's obviously wrong. It should be the other way around. Another way around? Seriously? The killer used those night vision goggles, not Byakuya. Oh, are you trying to go 1v1 me, my hero? Okay, let's go. Let's throw it down. Were you surprised by my hero's sudden argument? Yeah. Just between you and me, I was also surprised. Just kidding. I'm sorry. Now then, when this kind of argument surface, you will go into a one-on-one -on -one debate called Rebuttal Showdown. Awesome, this is something new. In this mode, you have to counter the other person's claim, draw out their weak spots, and argue against them. Please counter the other person's remark with the WASD keys, Based on the shape of their remarks, it's important to know whether to cut vertically, sideways, or diagonally. And based on that, you can skew the debate's mood and your, uh, to your advantage. On the other hand, if you ignore the other person's remarks, you will, uh, it will skew towards their advantage. In the bottom right hand corner of your screen, a number that shows the sharpness of your counter is displayed. This is the number of times you can cut remarks during one round of the debates. You will lose counts of sharpness even if you miss, so please be very careful. When the mood skews to your advantage for a certain length of time, the other party's argument changes. This means the conversation will develop. If that happens, they will end up divulging some weak point, uh, spots. However, you cannot normally cut remarks that contain weak spots. Instead, it will skew the mood towards the other party's advantage, plus it's gonna be very big. Just like the regular debate, please refute any weak spots with the left mouse button. Hmm. Of course, if you don't have the correct truth blade, you will not be able to cut an opponent's remark. Huh? What's a truth blade, exactly? I'm terribly sorry, it appears there has been a delay in contacting you. I will make sure the person in charge of contacting you takes a very long vacation. Why don't you just fire him? In this mode, truth bullets will be called truth blades. Um, that's about it. That's it? That's all he needed to tell us? There won't be any other changes to your handbook menu. Only the name was changed, but don't you think a change in feeling is important? If you press the escape during these arguments, you can review the controls. Uh, well then, good luck and have fun. Right, I have no idea how this is gonna be like. It said something about sharpness and stuff. Uh, knife, irons in this storage room, dural lumen case. It's gotta be from the dural lumen case. If you just use the killer, obviously use those night vision goggles. That's gotta be it. I don't know what the Where's fuck your I'm... proof that the killer used them? Because if they used them, then they could have killed Byakuya even in the dark. I mean, in reality, that's what happened. So those goggles were planted if the killer brought them to the crime scene. Allow me to cut through those words. I don't get this at all, <laughs> but I'll get used no, to it. Byakuya was definitely the one who brought those night vision goggles. Definitely? But why? Inside the Duralumin case Byakuya had with him during the party. He found a smaller case for storing the night vision goggles. Which means we can assume that the night vision goggles were kept inside that Duralumin case as well. Woohoo! I said assume! Ibuki never uses such clever language. Good for you, Ibuki. Plus, 
Byakuya was the only one who could have taken the night vision goggles out of the case. Because he was standing near the case. Since he was carrying it around before the blackout in the first place. I see. When you put it like that, it makes sense. Then, was that knife inside the case too? If there were no. night vision goggles inside, it wouldn't be weird for a knife to be in there too. It would be weird. I am weird, aren't I? At times like this, I'd rather be fantasizing about tonight's main dish. Which is probably going to be you if you don't contribute. Ooh, you totally mean that in a perverted way! He always does. The knife was brought in the door looming case, along with the night vision goggles too? No, 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 it was taped. No, that's not possible. The knife was hidden in the dining hall before the party even started. I should be able to prove it. Night vision goggle case, duct tape, a nice main dish to room kit. Definitely duct tape. I see! There was duct tape left under the table where the body was found. Huh? Duct tape? They probably hit the knife by duct taping it to the underside of the table. Yep. Oh, so that's why we found duct tape there. Though Byakuyo was thorough, even he couldn't have noticed a weapon taped to the underside of the table. This may be off topic, but why was Byakuya acting so paranoid? The letter? Not only did he bring a self-defense kit, but he had night vision goggles inside the case too. That's true. He went above and beyond being a little cautious. Now that you mention it, that applies to the dangerous items he confiscated as well. It's one thing to be a little cautious, but performing a body check is a bit much. It's because he made that promise, right? He promised, he vowed to not let anyone die under his, under his leadership. He probably knew someone was planning to commit a murder. Are you saying he predicted the murder? Could it be? Was he also in possession of the all-seeing eye? No, he's not into the same weird stuff you are, Gundam. You think so too, right, Hajime? Yeah, we found it together. That's right. Byakuya probably knew there was a murder, blah blah blah, it doesn't even let me finish reading that. Uh, what was it? It was definitely the note. Murder threat. The first kill will happen tonight, someone will definitely kill someone. I can prove it with this! Everyone, can you please take a look at this? Be careful. The first kill will happen tonight. Someone will definitely kill someone. Hey, the hell is this? Hajime and I found this in Byakuya's cottage. You kind of need to figure out whose handwriting is like a five-year-old. It looks like a threatening letter someone sent to him. So, who's the someone? Nobody besides Monokuma would write such a dumb, threatening letter like that. Wasn't me! Are you sure? Monami just hanging there. Poor Monami. The only lies I tell are friendly lies! Those are still lies! It doesn't matter who wrote it yet. So, Yakuya became paranoid because of this threatening letter? He probably decided to throw a party because of the letter. So he could keep an eye on everyone but he better. What do you mean? By gathering everyone in one place. He tried to create a situation where everyone could keep tabs on each other. In doing so, he tried to put the writer of the letter in a situation where they couldn't act. But the letter might have been just a little prank. But still, in a situation like this, you can't help but take it seriously. You kind of have to. As long as he was determined not to let any of us die, he couldn't take that risk. His strong sense of responsibility made him believe the letter was legitimate. Ah, he should have told us he received a threatening letter. If he had, we would have panicked. Byakuya probably knew that too. So, he tried to do something about it without telling anyone? I see. His strong sense of responsibility as our leader was his undoing. Screw that noise! Who the hell wrote that letter? Yeah, like somebody's gonna come forth. That was me. Well, obviously, the killer. The killer? 
is it really one of us? Who is it? Among us. Who's the one who killed Byakuya? <laughs> Enough already! Show yourself, you coward! If they were willing to come forward, they never would have committed a murder in the first place! <laughs> right? <laughs> and the whole point is to try and get away with it, right? They're just like, ah, I killed just so in during the class shock, and they're like, yeah, hey, it was me. You guys were right. But I still can't believe it. Someone in this room killed Byakuya. There's no way I can believe that. Um, pardon me. Can I say something, please? Of course, your highness. What is it, Miss Sonia? I regret that I must return to this topic, but I just realized something concerning the night vision goggles. If Byakuya was indeed wearing those goggles, how did the killer manage to navigate in the dark? You're right. They wouldn't have been able to see anything without the night vision goggles. But if the murderer had the goggles when they took the knife, then how did Byakuya see them? Even if the knife bore some sort of mark, it would have been difficult to see it in that darkness. No, but the, the glowing paint. The, the, glow in the, 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 the glow in the dark thingy? No, the killer definitely used the mark. And because of this mark, the killer was able to get the knife from under the table into his hands. <laughs> the mark was Byakuya Tugami. If it wasn't in the dark, Byakuya Tugami, fat Byakuya, would definitely be a good mark. Oh fuck, there's a timer. But because it was dark, he is not a good uh, mark for that during the uh, blackout. So definitely glowing paint. I see! What if the glowing paint was the mark? With that, you'd be able to get the knife even in the dark. In actuality, the knife we found under the table and the duct tape stuck to the underside of the table were both marked with glowing paint, right? Yep. Does that mean the killer painted them in advance? This was definitely all planned out. I'm 100% certain of it. This wasn't just something that happened in the moment. Just like, oh, now is the chance I kill. No, they actually knew before. Well, probably after Byakuya mentioned that the party would happen. But still, before the party even started, they planned all of this out. But painting them with glowing paint? It's as if they knew the blackout was going to happen. Which they definitely did. They had to have already known. That's why they used the glowing paint as a mark. Which means, whoever set up the blackout is the killer. Probably, yeah, unless people were working together, which I doubt. That seals it. The killer is whoever was in the office with the circuit breaker. No, it's not that easy. Which means, it was you, Peko Pekoyama! And that's it, that's it as well. That's one thing I feel like I didn't mention when Kazuichi, when I said he's a possible suspect, he was already very likely to point fingers. That's usually something that, you know, someone who committed the murder does very quickly because then they're like, okay, if I point a finger at someone, people will look at that person and they won't look at me. But I actually do the opposite. When someone points a finger, I look at the person that points the finger and start to think, why are you immediately pointing fingers? Peko killed poor Byakuya? Was this island not big enough for two glasses wearers? <laughs> I am not the killer. Oh, I guess she's not. She's that quickly convinced? How can you believe her so easily? But with Peko's height, I don't think she'd be able to reach the circuit breaker in the office. But nobody is. I, I don't care about a technicality like that. Peko's the one who tripped the breaker and caused the blackout! Uh, a technicality like that is really important. By tripping the breaker directly from the office, Peko was the one who caused the blackout. Is that... really what happened? After this debate, blue-colored weak spots will start appearing. If we call the weak spot you've seen up until now argue spots, the blue-colored weak spots will be called agree spots. When shooting a grease spots with truth bullets, you'll need to flip your way of thinking. Instead of arguing that the other person's testimony contains lies or mistakes, please fire the truth bullets that prove the person's testimony is correct. When your truth bullets merge with their weakness, it will also it will become a logically sound agreement. Isn't it a little hot in here? From now on, you must infer whether it's best to argue or agree based on what's being debated. Okay. 
So it's either like you gotta back someone's statement saying like, no, that's true, I agree with that. Or if you feel like there's something wrong with someone's statement, you just, you know, you pick it apart. It's so like, no, I disagree with that. Like we've always done. So it's basically just a new option added to it. Oh, three accounts. Nikomaru Terra Terra Chaki. Since Pekka was in the was office, in the kitchen. she could have caused the blackout at any time! That's impossible. Huh? Why is it impossible? Because I was not in the office. Not even before the blackout. Before the blackout. What happened to your guard duty? Sorry. Nature call. Oh, you weren't in the office? That's clearly a desperate excuse. Just from listening to Peiko's testimony, it's not weird to doubt her. But I feel like I spoke to someone during the investigation who totally backs up her testimony. Since Peiko was in the office, she could have caused the blackout at any time! Ch Chucky was outside. That's impossible. Your terror was in the... there? Uh, they huh? both had similar issues, possible? right? They both had to go to the bathroom. So I feel because like Nekomaru... Nekomaru is definitely... his account. Not they even both, before the blackout. They both had to go to the bathroom. I agree with that! No, I think Pekka was telling the truth. Mm-hmm. Don't tell me you're crushing on Pekko. No, sorry, she's not my type. And yet, it's nothing like that at all. Nekomaru's account is actually Pekko's alibi. I've been trying to use it many times, but the door just won't open at all. So she it's was going in the bathroom, apparently. Someone was occupying the bathroom for a long time, shortly after the party started. And it was finally freed up, after Byakuya's body was discovered. Oh, then the person who was in the bathroom that whole time was actually... Everyone else besides Pekka was in the dining hall after the party started, right? Yeah... I see. So there's no way anybody else could have locked themselves in the bathroom except Pekko. I... I guess that would be... true. You locked yourself in the commode?! You should have said so earlier! Kinda, yeah. There's no way she'd actually say that. Gosh, you are so insensitive! That's true, girls aren't really saying like, Yeah, I just took a dump. That's just a guy thing to sign, sort of say. Girls are more reserved when it comes to that. If she locked herself in the bathroom for that long, there's no doubt. It's shit. <laughs> if anybody knows, it's Nekomaru. He's like the shit master, okay? He's an expert when it comes to shit. <laughs> oh, there's no way she'd admit it. There's no way she'd admit she was taking a shit. No, girls don't take a shit, okay? Hey, weren't you guys taught any basic manners, or were you raised in a locker room? I'm sorry. It, it's fine. How about we stop talking about this and move on to something else? Okay, this makes a lot of sense. But don't worry, the smell wasn't that strong. I used the bathroom right after you, so you can trust me. I... I said it's fine. <laughs> but still, you were in the bathroom for a really long time. Did you get food poisoning or something? As soon as I stepped into the office, I felt this sudden rush of pain in my stomach. Because of that, I was unable to leave the bathroom, including when the blackout occurred. But the only people that apparently ate uh, the food was Akane and Peiko. Shouldn't Akane have something similar happen to her as well then? Hey, uh, how did it feel to do your business in the dark? Did you get excited? Calm down, Terra. She was taking a shit. How do you get excited by taking a shit in the dark? Dude, you're into some pretty weird fucking stuff if you, that gets you excited. Holy shit. I knew this guy was weird. And perverted, but dang, this guy even trumps Luda. Seriously, stop it. But still, your stomach pain. Was that really just a coincidence? Hey, what's the deal? Don't butt into other people's business, especially if you didn't do any investigating. And especially if you weren't there either. 
I'm only butting in because you fucking idiots are out of your element. Stop this childish nonsense. Just what do you mean by coincidence? What I mean is, is it possible someone slipped her some laxatives? Tarot, tarot, that could be possible, mm. but the, the only way to confirm that is whether Akane had it as well. Unless, I mean, I guess um, Tarot, tarot could have possibly only put it on, um, because um, Peiko took her food on a specific plate, right? She didn't eat from everything else, she took food off of... Off of the, the you know the diet with the serving tables and put it on a plate so it could be that someone put some lax laxatives onto her plate therefore she is the only one that gets the the shit you know and akane didn't L laxatives if so the killer could have tripped the breaker as soon as that girl left the office don't you think yeah i see that might have happened the question is whether Peiko's stomach ache was a coincidence, or if someone intentionally caused it. Depending on the answer, the outcome of this trial could change drastically. Hmm. See timer, embarrassing pose, knife, not goggle. Definitely not knife, not or goggles. Did you eat anything weird? If it's with food, I don't it's gonna remember be eating anything weird. Dishes. Now that you mention it, you brought food to the office, right? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit from the dining hall. There might have been some laxatives in it, don't you think? Taro Taro cooked the food. How suspicious! I, I wouldn't do anything like that. Laxatives would ruin the taste. Yeah. I feel like he's he takes pride in his food, so I definitely don't think he would he would even if he wanted to kill someone through his food, I don't think he would do he would make the food try and be as delicious as possible. So I do think it was laxative but he didn't put it over all of the food. So it's not terror terror either, I feel. Whether Paypal's stomach ache was a coincidence, or if someone intentionally caused it, we need to clarify that first. Did you eat anything weird? It has to be the party dishes, because it's about I don't remember eating anything weird. Now that you you brought food to the op just a little bit from- There might have been some laxatives in it, don't- No, that's wrong! No, it's impossible that laxatives were slipped into the food in the dining hall. It had kind of been on the- in the, in the entire food of all the dining hall. It either must have been on Peiko's plate, or some other way, but definitely not on all the food, because then otherwise Akane would have had it too, for sure. Because Pekka wasn't the only one who ate that food. Akane ate some of it too. If the food had laxatives in it, I'm pretty sure Akane would have had stomach issues as well. I'm Byakuya too, right? Because I'm pretty sure he ate the first skewer. I feel totally fine! Yeah, okay, then it's certainly not laxatives. At least not on the entire, on all the food. Like I said, the, the dishes are innocent. Don't go making weird accusations. I apologize for causing a scene. Fuyuhiko should apologize, not you. He's the one who made the laxative accusation. That's true, it feels like he kind of pulled that out of his ass. He suddenly came up with it. What the fuck did you say, bitch? Oh, God. Cease this bickering. Yes, my lord, or oh, my lady. Let's just dismiss Peko's stomachache as a coincidence and go back to discussing the blackout. Yeah, yeah. We already know that, you trashy skank. What? You don't have to tell us. Why are, why are people so, you know, insulting each other the entire time? Especially Hyoko and, um, and Fuyuhiko always just insulting people for no reason, I feel. Like, come on, look at Mikan. She's not a trashy skank. Trashy skank? Oh, look at her. She's so cute and innocent. As long as the murder happened during the blackout, then the blackout itself is what is actually important. So we need to make clear how that blackout occurred. It was due to um, a, an overload for sure. Um, iron in the storage room, storage room, tablecloth. No, the, the, the tablecloth has nothing to do Who with the- Who tripped the breaker the, and how did they do it? If you can't answer that, I'm gonna bop you on the head! Did they throw a stone and hit it? 
Maybe they used a remote control? They probably messed with the breaker. Oh, that's it does not have to be the breaker. They may have tampered with the power supply and transmitters. Or maybe they caused a power surge? Oh, that one. I agree with that! Because of- I mean, why else would irons be on all it's three of them? just as Mahiru said. The blackout was caused by a power surge. And there's no way someone could reach it. None of us is that tall. Of course, that's not a coincidence. Someone caused it intentionally. And the thing that really speaks to me that has to- that makes me so certain that it has to be that it was because of a power surge or overload or whatever is the fact that Monokuma said that he was the one that, you know, fixed the blackout. So, if it weren't for that, the blackout would still have been happened, would have still, uh, you know, would still have been going on, because nobody can literally reach the freaking circuit breaker. Which is why those three irons were arranged to cause the blackout. When you found them right after the blackout, the irons were still on, right? Yep. So by leaving those irons on in the storage room, they deliberately caused a power surge. Yeah, it seems that's how the killer caused the blackout. Stupid fool! What? Hold on a second, let me speak too! What the heck? You dare to go 1v1 me? You say the irons in the storage room were used to trigger the blackout? That's inexcusable! Why? What? Alright, let's do rebuttal showdown. AC Tyrant, Duraluing Case, Storage. Irons. Uh, I guess we gotta pick one. It's either the irons or the AC timer. I'm gonna go with the irons because that's what we're. If the irons in the storage room caused the blackout, then for the killer to turn the irons on, you're saying they went all the way to the storage room? Then that means everyone who was in the when the blackout occurred can't be a suspect. People who are in the dining hall weren't able to cause the blackout. Is that really it? Oh, like this is still really confusing to me. But I guess the point that they're trying to get at least with the, the argument: the people who were in the dining hall weren't able to cause the blackout. They could, if they already plan. They already put the, uh, you know, I feel like the 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 irons isn't what caused. Or what what put the the power over the hump to co to cause it to, to black out right to cause the uh, the overload it must have been the AC because the AC is in the room and the AC was set on the timer both at 11:30 and at 11:30 the blackout happened so it has to be the AC timers narrowing down the suspects like that is dangerous I should address that the irons in the storage room caused the blackout then for the killer to turn the irons on. You're saying they went all the way to the storage room? Then that means everyone who was in the- when the blackout occurred can't be a suspect! No, just because people were in the dining hall... ...doesn't mean they're not a suspect. But the people in the dining hall weren't able to cause- If the irons caused the blackout, then the killer had to go to the storage room before that and turn on the irons! Now do you intend to take back what you said? It's true the irons were responsible for the blackout, but that shouldn't be the only reason. But the people in the dining hall weren't able to cause- If the irons caused this the blackout- way. Allow me to cut through those words! The irons are just one reason the blackout occurred, but they weren't the direct trigger. The direct trigger was when the air conditioners in the dining hall and office clicked on. The air conditioners! The timers for both air conditioners were set to 11.30 p.m. 11.30 p.m.? Mr. Ham Hams died around that time, too! Yep. I see. When the timers activated the air conditioners, the breaker was tripped and caused a blackout. I see! I understand! Indubitably! Good. Indubitably? They probably checked the old building's energy usage in advance and use the irons to nearly max it out. So once they set the air conditioner's timers, 
They just had to wait until they started up on their own. If so, even if Pekka was in the office, it still would have been possible to cause a blackout, indubitably. <laughs> now she's using that word. Indubitably? Miss Sonia, not you too. That's the word of the class trial, indubitably. Regarding the energy usage, they probably asked Monokuma about it. Indubitably. Dun dun dun! Is she right? Such a hateful bear! You deserve to die a thousand deaths! That's not enough. A thousand, you say? If I died that many times, I might really stay dead, you know? Shut up! You guys just stay quiet! I couldn't have prevented the blackout even if I was in the office. But even so, I feel regret. If I was in the office, I could have reset the breaker in time. And maybe the murder wouldn't have occurred. No. The breaker in the office was built into a high area of the wall that's impossible to reach. Hey, don't don't underestimate Peiko's vertical leap, okay? She can jump really high. Resetting the breaker in that darkness would have been impossible, no matter what. Sounds like you don't need to blame yourself. Even so, the killer is so sly. I'm starting to worry we may never actually find them. No, we will. It's we all always right. do. You don't have to worry. What? Nagito is confident? Because they're just a petty killer, right? They can't defeat symbols <laughs> of hope like you guys. That's such a Makoto thing to say. But what that he said it in a weird way though. It didn't sound that convincing either. Huh? There's no way everybody will lose now. This little incident will just be a stepping stone for you all. Why is he saying it like that? In the end, hope always wins. That's what I believe. I believe that too. I want to believe that. And it's hopefully gonna happen. But why is he giving you speech? N Nagito? W what happened to you? Huh? What do you mean? Well, you have been saying this whole time that there's no way a killer could be among us. Oh, is that so? Well, let's just put that minor detail aside for now and talk about the incident. That's not a minor detail, though. That's what I mean, he undermines certain things where I feel like it's really important. For now, we found out how the blackout occurred. But the question is, who caused it, right? He has these, these sudden... It's not a mood swinger, is it? But he has this sudden moment where it feels like he's a completely different person. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Anybody could have hid and set the timers for the air conditioners. Setting up the irons in the storage room could have been done before Byakuya set foot in the old building. What a shame. Any one of us is capable of that. What are you implying? He's just saying... After all this time, we still haven't made any progress! Huh? Yeah. Even though we have been arguing for so long? Unfortunately, it's the truth. No, 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 don't be such Debbie Downers, come on. Despite the fact that we've discussed this at length, there's not even one clue that leads to the killer. But that might be because... There's no way what? any of us could be a killer. But before just now you said oh you, what? you're changing your story again? <laughs> what the hell? Anyway, I have an idea about what we all should do at this point. This is so confusing, this guy. Has anyone thought about our situation like this? Instead of surviving by doubting others, isn't it better to get killed for believing in others? What? Doesn't that mean? Are you saying we should all just give up and die? Nagito, there's definitely something wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> you guys only think there's something wrong with me because there's something wrong with you. Suspecting each other like this. There's no way that's healthy behavior. What the fuck did you smoke? And what it was, give me some too. Let's stop this already. We don't have to find out who the killer is. Seriously, this dude sounds high. I can't stand this anymore. 
I don't want to do this to my friends. I have to. I don't want to do this either. <laughs> me too. Please, take me home already. He's like speaking to everyone's doubts. But we shouldn't have doubts. I mean, everybody has them. But they shouldn't be prevalent over our willingness to succeed. Ah, uh, but... Like, you just know that this is not an option, right? We can't get out of here. That's just the, the, the game. The game doesn't allow us to, for all of us to just quit whenever we want to. Monokuma has... doesn't allow that. It's not gonna happen. Ah, I wanna go home and eat candy! S stop it. If everyone acts like this, I... I'm gonna... No. Everyone calm down. We're all friends, aren't we? There's no way one friend would murder another. <sighs> I, I'm so confused. Then why did Byakuya die? Who cares? Let's just give up already. Dude! Are you listening to yourself? There are no clues that lead to the killer anyway. Not a single one. There are plenty of clues left. That's wrong. Ah, oh, yes, Chucky. Come on, somebody finally on our side. I think. No, I trust you. I believe in you. Did you say something? You weren't even listening? Guys, we've already found a clue that might point to who the killer is. Oh, yeah. Tell him, Chucky. A clue, you say? You know who the killer is? The killer? I don't know. But we do have a clue about a suspicious person, I think. I see. Then care to tell me, what's this clue you're talking about? I don't... I, I just feel like I can't... I want to trust him, I want to believe him, but I don't know, he's... See, Nahito is acting so weird right now, like, what just happened to him? First of all... Let's try thinking about how the killer was able to obtain the knife during the blackout. Like, suddenly he's all about, you know, Ah, it doesn't matter, we should just give up, let's just all die to get our hands and hands, because we're friends, you know? Nothing can bad can happen when we're friends and we stick all together, but... Even though the rules state that if we just give up, we're gonna die, we're gonna die together as friends. Kumbaya. Didn't we already cover that? They use glowing paint as a mark. No, not that. I mean before that. The difference between Nagito and Makoto is that Makoto would never give up, I feel. Before? Is she asking how the killer got close to that table? Even if they had to obtain the knife by relying on the glow from the paint. In order to do that, they needed to get close to that table while it was still dark. Let's try examining the situation. My hero's diagram might be useful here. The diagram of where everyone was standing before the blackout, right? Um, here it is! is Nagito is the closest one standing to the table and the lamp. Is it really Nagito? Oh, motherfucker. Just as I thought, this diagram is the clue. Who the killer is, and how they were able, to, uh, how they were able to move the, to the table in the dark. That's clearly shown in this diagram. First, we need to discuss how the killer was able to move to that table in the dark. The killer probably used something to help them move in the dark. Uh, select suspicious spots. What, what do you mean, help them move in the dark? This was definitely Byakuya's, this was already there. Like, if, if it has to be something that guides them to this place. It's nothing from underneath, so it has to be the, here! the, the, the lamp. But, how does that work when it's the in the dark? The must have used the desk lamp to move to that table in the dark. The desk lamp? I hope you don't mean they turned on a light or something. There was a blackout. There's no way the killer could have used the desk lamp. Oh, but they could have... 
I mean, the desk lamp is, is, you know, if the person just feels around, they could feel the, the cord that's attached to the desk lamp. Therefore, it's like a, a way of navigating, you know? It's like, you know, if you know your surroundings and then bam, you expect the blackout to happen, you know, okay, this is where the lamp is. It's attached to this, it's, it's uh, you know, the cord goes from the table to the, the wall socket. And then you can sort of navigate yourself from there, try and find a cord. And then the, the cord is going to lead the person to the table, right? They just have to follow the cord. Of course, there's no way they use the desk lamp's light. The killer actually used it has to be the power cord. Wait if the desk lamp on light bulb. No, because it was dark, blackout. It must have been. I can the prove it with this! They didn't turn the desk lamp on. They used its power cord. Power cord? They could have felt their way to that table using the power cord, right? By doing that, the killer was able to move to the table, then use the glowing paint to find the knife. Mm -hmm. And there's only one person oh, here who could have done that. Nagito. Uh, Nagito is the closest to it. Who? The only person here who could have possibly done it. Oh, really? Nagito, dude. I'm sorry, man. You're the only one! Nagito, it was you, wasn't it? Me? Judging from everyone's positions before the blackout, the only person near the power cord was you. Which means, the only one who could have felt their way to the table using the power cord was... Nagito! <laughs> That's just a coincidence! Is it? But still, you had a chance, right? A chance to hide the knife under the table? See, that's what I mean. Because I... He was the only one cleaning up in the in the place, right? Therefore, I feel like, you know, the person that planned all of this must have known their surroundings and must have known the interior of the entire cottage. And the person that had the best opportunity to get to know everything about it beforehand was definitely Nagito. Nagito's chance to hide the knife under the table was... Uh, right after blackout, right before the blackout, when he was cleaning, right after him, definitely when he was cleaning. I see! Nagito, weren't you cleaning the dining hall all morning? If so, you would have had a chance to hide the knife. Th that's... If you factor in the power cord and the time you spent cleaning, you're the only one who could have done it. I just don't like pointing the finger at him, but it... it all the clues seem to point to that. Seriously! That's all just a coincidence! If it was just one coincidence, it'd be fine. But when it's one right after another... Yeah, it's no longer a coincidence. I wonder, is something like that even possible? Unless somebody framed Nagito, but... Could it be? Did you give yourself cleaning duty on purpose so you could hide the knife under the table? That's true, he's the one that also came up with the, was it the chopsticks drawing, uh, you know, drawing sticks or drawing straws. Now that you mention it, Nagito did prepare the drawing to pick who cleaned the dining hall. To be honest, I already prepared a drawing because I assumed something like this would, yeah, that's true. Like he came with this already prepared, like he already had this in mind. Oh, dude. To go through the trouble of preparing this, just what did you think would happen? But the thing is, like, even if he knows which one is the shortest or which, there was one that had a tag on it, right? It was marked, I believe. But there's still a chance that somebody picks out that that one, even if uh, Nagito knows which one it is. Unless he hit that one from all the others and just, uh, you know, pulled it out of his pocket and like, all right, everybody pick one, and then you know, he sneaky did it that way. So ne nobody even had a chance of having the one with the red mark because he had it himself the whole time anyway. Is that unfair? Yeah. 
You rigged the drawing, didn't you? That's how you got picked to clean the dining hall, isn't it? Oh, fuck. I don't know if you're the killer or not, but regardless, it proves that you're suspicious, right? If that's the case, that strange speech you made earlier, that was part of your plan, too. You got us to lower our guard and tried to hide the fact that you did it, didn't you, you motherfucker? Well, just admit it already! Nagito, tell me you object to this. Frankly, I don't want to believe it either. Exactly, that's what I'm struggling with. I don't want it to be Nagito. We investigated together. You were so kind. I can't believe you're the one who killed Byakuya. <laughs> just, just say no. Nagito, say something. <laughs> He's going crazy. is going on <laughs> why is he getting all crazy eyes the ultimates are working together to combat the despair of their friend's death ah, how wonderful how beautiful it is this definitely seems Junko-esque huh what the fuck is going on Those eyes. At that moment, Nagito's eyes. The darkness in his eyes shone brightly, as if layers upon layers of darkness were folding into each other. As if hope and despair had been crudely mixed together. Let's cut to the chase. You're correct. It was my doing all along. Fuck, really? I'm the one who hid the knife under the table before the party started. I'm the one who used the power cord to find my way to the table in the dark. Oh no. See, and of so. course, I'm the one who caused the blackout. After all, there's no way I'd knowingly whip out a knife in front of everyone, right? Is it just me, or does he seem a little nuts right now? Not just a little. But I never expected Byakuya to have night vision goggles. Because of that, we had ourselves a little scuffle under the table. And, well, you all saw how that played out. But with the twist ending like this, I think we can all agree this ended up being a very interesting mystery. <laughs> Byakuya performed admirably. J just stop it already! Seriously! What the hell happened to you? Why is he... <sighs> Don't tell me. Is this your true nature? Were you lying to us this entire time? Is he part of the ultimate despair? Me? Lie? That's outrageous! There's no way someone like me could ever lie to you guys. I understand better than anyone else that I'm ultimately worthless. I'm too arrogant to have dreams or cling to hope. I'm too disdainful to actually try at anything. I've made peace with the fact that I'm a lowly, stupid, insignificant human who can't do anything right. Holy crap! He's totally the type of guy who spent his childhood killing neighborhood pets! <laughs> he seems like the sort of person whose eyes light up while watching Friday the 13th. Just like me. Yeah, or he, he's the type of person that would be active during the purge. He would not be a person hiding in their basement like I would be. He would be active out on the streets like, Come, come at me, motherfucker. I'm gonna kill you. That's quite the hobby you have there. But, like... Now's not really the time to bring it up. D this guy... Is he... Is he... The real Nagito? Hey Nagito! If you were behind all of this, then did you also send that threatening letter? Yep, oh, I sure did. 
Really? There's nobody else on this island whose handwriting is that painful to look at, right? I guess. I don't know. I've never seen his handwriting before. But why would you send a threatening letter in the first place? I think somewhere deep in my heart. I was probably hoping to find someone who would stop my evil deeds. Well, I bet if that really was my reason, at least some of you would feel sorry for me. Are you making fun of us? By threatening Yakuya, Nagito was likely able to manipulate his actions. Then, how about that old looking building near the hotel? He suggested that as well. But if it's just cleaning, leave it to me, I'm actually pretty good at it. In doing so, Nagito was able to manipulate everyone to the scene where the murder would occur. Am I wrong? That reminds me. Nagito was the one who suggested I guard the office. It definitely sounds and seems like he put everything into place. Well, not only is the storage room packed with lots of stuff, it's hard to see in there and full of cobwebs. And I was so busy cleaning the dining hall that I didn't have time to clean the storage room, yeah? If you stayed in there for a long time, I think it'd be bad for your health. In that case, why don't you guard the case, uh, the case in the office? Oh, I get it. If Paco was guarding the storage room, Nagito wouldn't have been able to use the irons. True. The threatening letter, along with all your suggestions, it was all a trap to manipulate us. Yep, that's true too. But you're wrong about one thing. Uh, huh? What? I didn't need to rig the drawing for cleaning duty, you know? If that's true, then how did you conveniently get picked for cleaning duty? I see. Well, there's no way I'd expect you to remember it. A worthless talent for a worthless human. He was the, the ultimate... He's the same as Makoto, the ultimate lucky... Well, you know, he was... That was originally with Makoto. The ultimate lucky student, right? Uh, the ultimate baby face, unlucky. He was the ultimate lucky student, but... Now, I guess it's lucky because he wanted to, to have it, right? I guess from his perspective it makes him seem lucky, but from our perspective it makes him seem unlucky. I see! But he was definitely the lucky student, same as Makoto. You're the ultimate lucky student. Then... Did you? That's right. I just trusted my luck. I trusted I'd be picked for cleaning duty. Really? Wow, he didn't even rig it. You just relied on your luck? That's ballsy. It's not just luck. It's true my talent sucks. But I'm still the ultimate lucky student, you know? I wouldn't call that a sucky talent. You can win lotteries and shit like that, right? Basically anything that's with probability or chance or luck, he would win at it. Huh? I'm left with the red mark, haha, for someone called the ultimate lucky student. You don't seem very lucky right now. Yeah, that's what we said. But he wanted at it to At the time, that way. Hajime said I wasn't lucky. But yeah. it was actually the opposite. Damn it, Naito! I was lucky. That's why I got picked for cleaning duty. Just like I wanted. <sighs> Enough. That... I don't care about that anymore. More importantly, why did you kill Byakuya? Answer me! Byakuya was a very capable leader. For someone like him to get killed? Oh, the despair it brings. So he, he definitely, the way that he talks is very similar to Junko and Monokuma, right? Their goal is to bring despair. Killing someone like Byaku, who was the leader of us, definitely spreads and brings despair. But just the way that he speaks, he knows about the game. He knows the purpose and the goals of this game. And he's trying to help Monokuma in that way. So is he the traitor? The spy? It's only fitting that you symbols of hope should use his death as a stepping stone to shine even brighter. That was my only motivation. You're not making any sense! Fine, let's start the damn vote already. I'm ready to fucking kill this psycho. Please! Monokuma! <sighs> Please, wait! What? Huh? The fuck? 
I mean, it's true we haven't gone through all the clues yet. Um, 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 in, how should I put this? Um, it is Nagito really the killer? Oh, she's questioning it. Um, what are you saying? He's already confessed, hasn't he? I, I already know that, but um, there's just something oh. a little strange. What did Mikkan do the autopsy? If it's only a little, then keep your mouth shut. Your ugly face is stressing me out. It makes me want to puke. Shut up, Yoko. Don't talk about her that way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, for now, might I suggest we listen to what she has to say? Yeah, I'm interested too. Ah, oh, well, what is her... The, the, the thing about it was, is that... Biaki was killed by something thin and... The, the, oh, I don't know. Remember, did... Nagito said he actually killed him with knife, right? But that's not true. Remember what I said earlier? That the blood on the knife doesn't seem to suggest that it stabbed someone. But we know who the killer is. Simply listening is acceptable. However, I won't allow this to end with mere play. Now then, let us lift the curtain for our bloody spectacle. This is definitely the autopsy because that's what Mika was talking about. I, I think it's strange that the killer is so obviously Nagito. Um, he has already confessed. Um, you know that bastard Nagito is the one who did it. He killed Byakuya with the knife he hit! Did he? No, 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 no. Oh, never mind. Fuck! Thanks for wasting our time! Then let's prepare to cast our votes. Why does Mika think it's strange? Because the, the, it doesn't match with the knife. Because she must know something that contradicts the crime scene. But that's the sad thing about it. Even though Mika knows something is wrong, she is not a dominant she doesn't have a per dominant personality. She has a very submissive personality, right? So even if she thinks she's right, if people say they, they are wrong, she's going to say like, oh yeah, you're right. Even though she knows herself like that's not true. She just herself can't express herself in that way to make her come across convincing to say like, no, I'm the one who's right in this situation. Uh, I think it's so the killer not, so it's definitely not the knife that um, he hit. He has already um, you know that bastard Nagi, he killed Byakuya with the knife he No, that's wrong. That knife might not be the murder weapon. That's what you wanted to say, right, Mikon? I think it's the skewer. It has to be the skewer. But for it to be the skewer, it had to be someone from below. So someone underneath the floorboards. What the hell are you talking about? It's obvious the knife was the murder weapon. But, but based on the entry wounds on Byakuya's body, the actual weapon should be roughly five millimeters in diameter. Five millimeters in diameter? That's like way skinnier than a knife! Uh -huh. Hey, that better be true. If you screwed up, I'll sell your fucking ass to a whorehouse! God, why do they have to be so mean and rude? <laughs> no, no, not a whorehouse! Don't worry, I'll buy you, Mikan. That sounded weird. Hey, why are you threatening her? Is this what you're trying to say, Mikan? As long as we can't prove that the knife is the murder weapon, we can't assume that I'm the killer. Yeah. What are you saying? No one else can be the killer. It has to be you. Hey, don't blame me. Mikon's the one who said it. I'm sorry. Why does it feel like Nagito is testing us or something? I don't know, man. Hey, Nagito, are you still hiding something? Uh, hiding? Like, during the blackout, did something happen between you and Byakuya that we don't know about? Oh, remember what Byakuya said? 
he said something really strange. Who knows? After all this, what else do you intend to hide? He, something, he sounded really surprised, like, oh, what is this? And considering the fact that he had his um, night vision goggles on, he definitely saw what was happening, right? Therefore, his reaction was like, oh, what is this? Jeez, the moment your back's against the wall, you get all silent. You piss me off. What happened during the blackout? Hmm... <laughs> well, if someone knows, it has to be a book. Uh, if you cross your eyes like this, it gives you double vision. Oh my god, girl. Don't get distracted. Our lives are at stake, you know? Huh? Whose life is at stake? Seriously, how long is it going to take for you to understand the damn rules? Nobody can see in the dark. No matter how hard you think about it, the truth is beyond your sight. Don't you think that's a pretty clever metaphor? Despite the fact that it came from me? No, that's not it. Not it? What's not it? The truth is beyond our sight. No, that can't be it. There should be some way to find out what happened in the dark. Um, I'm not entirely too sure about this. Lucas accounts... That's it's probably that, right? Her terror's account, no, was in the kitchen, fire door, no. Yeah, that's definitely... She, she heard all the voices in like in which order they came as well, right? Yeah, Mahiro, Kazuichi, and then what? Uh, Byakuya, what the hell? What's going on here? This is... See? That was his surprised reaction. It has to be this. I can prove it with this! Even if we couldn't see what happened in the dark, I'm pretty sure someone could have heard it. Isn't that right, Yibuki? For reals? For reals, girl. Don't act so surprised. You're the one that told us, remember? You were the one who told me, remember? What? How everyone was shouting during the blackout? Word for word. Uh, everyone, calm down. We gotta stay calm in a situation like this. Ah, don't step on my feet. That seems to sound like somebody's moving around for sure. What the hell? What's going on here? This, this is... Yeah... Ow! Wait, he said ow! Turn the damn lights on! I can't eat like this, you know! Meaning he got hurt, right? Why else would you say ow? You guys? Where are you? W wasn't the blackout just in the kitchen? Perhaps the breaker overloaded? Hold on a sec. I'll go along the wall. And do something about it. Such perceptive hearing. Impressive. I'd expect no less from the ultimate musician. It's a good thing your ears are awesome because your face, style, figure, and personality totally suck. Come on. <laughs> You've cut me deep with your knife of truth. However, after hearing what Byakuya and Nagito said in the dark, what the hell? What's going on here? This, this is... Ow! Ow, he says ow! It almost sounds like... Byakuya fought back against Nagito or something. Well, that's actually what happened. Hmm. Huh? As a sign of respect for Ibuki's talent, I have a small confession to make. Like, it really seems like he's toying with us. I was actually shoved out from under the table by Byakuya. He shoved you out? Just as the blackout occurred, I hurried to duck under the table and grab the knife. But Byakuya, wearing his night vision goggles, caught me and shoved me right out from under the table. <laughs> That's right. I'm so incompetent that I couldn't even grab the knife. So, Byakuya stopped him when he was trying to get the knife. And he got shoved out from under the table before he could even grab it? Well, it sounds plausible. I mean, just from listening to what they both said at the time. What the hell? What's going on here? Definitely surprised, like, hey, he sees Nagito. 
Th this is... And he sees the knife, I'm assuming? Ow! And then what? Nagito accidentally got stabbed by it, or hurt by it? Cut by it? Slashed by it? I could interpret it like that. No. Actually, now that I think about it, that sounds like exactly what happened. After getting shoved out from under the table, I was just as confused as you guys. I lost sight of the glowing paint, and I didn't even know where the power cord was. Before I realized it, the lights had come back on, and Byakuya's body was lying under the table. Huh. Hold on! So that's to say that now he's saying that he isn't the killer. Are you saying you're not the killer? From the very beginning, the idea to throw a party... So it seems like he planned all of that, but ultimately he actually wasn't the one that killed him. So he failed at his plan, basically. That's why he was so negatively saying about it, like, I'm so incompetent, I can't even grab the knife. Hiding the knife, setting up the blackout, it was all going according to plan. So his plan went perfectly until the very end, until, you know, the most important thing, the killing thing. That's the thing that he didn't do. But unfortunately, my plan failed. And all thanks to Byakuya's night vision goggles. What happened after that? Even I don't know. You failed? Th then you're not the one who killed Byakuya? But why did he say that he did, though? <laughs> then we're right back to square one! Not necessarily. How can that be? We spent all this time talking back and forth! Meaninglessness. What other word is brimming with so much despair? I see, why is he trying to make us feel despair? But you can't give up! You need what? to have hope! Do your best and move forward! Now his eyes are weird again and he's talking about hope. You need to have hope. He's like having an identity crisis or something. He doesn't know which side he is on, hope or despair. Rising to the challenge again and again is why you guys are the symbols of hope! Yeah, probably similar in the way that every, what, every student of Hope's Peak Academy was also considered the symbols of hope. Is Nagito really not the killer? Is this guy really the Nagito I knew before? It's like he's, he's struggling from within. What if he's part Makoto, part, I don't know, Junko? Because that's the way that he comes across sometimes. Like he's struggling in himself. No. There's no way I can say that. I just thought I knew him. But this whole time, I didn't know anything about this guy. I didn't know his true character. It's as simple as that. But now's not the time for me to dwell on that. We need to find Byakuya's killer by any means possible. Because if we don't, we... we will die here! What? Suspended? Well now! What? What is this? Now then, the class trial has reached its climax, but... Okay, here's a question for yeah? you! What's this? To those of you who figured out who it is, how about you try out the Guess the Killer Challenge? Whoever fails to guess the right killer will have their save data melt away like butter. But if you guess right, I'll reward you with 10 million dollars. 10 billion? Of course! For those of you who don't know who the killer is, you can just continue on. Now then! What are you gonna do? Left mouse button to continue or B? Guess the killer. I don't have a B. I don't have a freaking B! What? This is a trick. Just kidding! You can't make a choice, I fucking knew it! There's no way you'd be able to guess who the killer is! <laughs> and of course, there's no 10 billion dollars either! I never believed in that anymore. You're so evil! Villain! You are truly a villain! What the fuck was that intermission?